Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Martha O'Hara with Martha O'Hara Interiors with offices in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Austin, Texas, and really doing work all over the country. You have over a million saves on House. You've been with House from the very beginning, one of the most popular designers. Great to speak with you and get a little peek inside your home, which is just stunning. So thank you for joining us, Martha. Well, thank you for those kind words, and I am pleased to be here and pleased to show you my personal home. Well, let's jump into it. This is such a fabulous space. Tell me about this home. We live in South Minneapolis, inside the city limits. The house was built in 1922. It does have a well-known architect who is Ernest Kennedy. It's very old and historic and has great bones. Walk me through that entry and that first experience when you come into the home. Well, this is the area that I was most impressed with when we purchased the house. So less has been done with this room than others. It had the beautiful staircase and it had the domed ceiling with significant plaster work. We just lightened and brightened because it was painted a very deep blue. So now it's white, it's light, it's bright. It has a somewhat uh, modern chandelier that I especially love. And we found a perfect little sit, take off your shoes, piece of furniture that is placed symmetrically. And that's about all it does. It connects you to upstairs, to the dining room on your right, and to the living room on your left. You've got two really beautiful different experiences in the living room. Well, the living room uh, was always an extremely important room in a house built in 1922. You usually got significant space. You most often got a fireplace. This is where the builders and architects wanted marble and grand crown moldings. It's part of the millwork, and millwork in traditional houses were quite significant. The original millwork is in the living room. We wanted to reproduce that millwork throughout the main level in any area where we did remodel or renovation. It took nine pieces of millwork to create the crown molding. So that is an important, I think, feature of how much detail we took to keep some of the old character of the house, but to make it relevant to today's lifestyle. Our sofas we've had for several years. They are so comfortable, and yet they're not overstuffed. They can go transitional or they can go traditional. We love them. The cocktail table, I like it because it's a waterfall style, beautiful wood and a, and a silver wood finish. I have always loved the Plattner chairs, a modern touch to put in the living room. So we do enjoy that half of the living room a great deal. We use it, especially in the winter time, as our main spot to watch TV and enjoy a fire in the fireplace. There is an area that was originally a bookcase alcove under the main staircase. We wanted to make it more usable without taking away our ability to formally entertain in that area. So we created a rotating TV in the bookcase and we were able to achieve a 54 inch TV. With that, we can have casual entertainment or casual time of our own. I love that idea. That really looks beautiful. You would never know it's there. It, it takes some dead space to, to be able to create that. But when it works, I think it's a grand solution to, to those of us who would like to hide the TV. This living room, it's a long living room. Tell me what happened on the other side of the living room. We have a chaise lounge, beautiful piece of furniture. I can't say that anyone ever lounges on it, but it, people perch on it when we entertain. The two chairs with the black and white print fabric, those chairs swivel, and they're very, very comfortable for people of all sizes. And they do get used often. Rarely does a day go by that I don't walk in and sit in one of those chairs the light comes in really nicely in that area. We put a, a simple sisal rug. They're organic products that tend to mix well, and they're a little bit casual. So you get that nice morning light where these two chairs are. It'd be a nice place to wake up, have a cup of coffee, hang out. Yeah, and if I had kids coming home on a school bus, that's probably where I'd sit. Let's go into the kitchen, which you change significantly in the space. This was just a tiny 150 square foot, almost unworkable 
Tell me about this beautiful kitchen. The kitchen is 300 square feet. The focal point of the room to me is the range, the towel work. I love that we carried it all the way up to the ceiling. And so there is not any wall in the kitchen that doesn't have a cabinet on it or an appliance on it or it's covered with towel. The island, I went with the Calcutta gold marble. I would do that again too. I always recommend that when you're putting a natural stone as a center point, go see the actual slab you're getting. And one of my vendors that uh, manufactured that, they put heat under it. So there is a little switch that I can turn on that will heat that marble surface. That's kind of fun in the cold, cold winter when you come down for maybe a bowl of oatmeal. And you come down, you kind of warm up next to, instead of the fireplace, warm up next to the marble countertop. <laughs> exactly. What about your uh, approach to cabinetry and what's the hardware in this space? I, I tend to find drawers better than just open a cabinet and have shelves inside. I think it's easier to pull those drawers out. I like glass, but I had to balance it a little bit because when you use glass cabinetry, you're going to see what it looks like behind there. I decided to use mostly white in my dishes. Of course, my crystal shows, but then behind, but I had to have one or two of those cabinets where it could just stay messy and full of things that I didn't want to look at every day. A few things I probably took a little too far in making sure they looked like the old house. Today, when you, when you paint woodwork, it's almost always sprayed, especially if you're redoing cabinetry in your kitchen. And of course, the painters come in and they're very good painters and they spray the wood and they spray the wood and it is in their eyes to perfection. I see, hmm, it looks a little plastic to me. Mm -hmm. It's too perfect. So after all of that was done, I had them take a paintbrush and stroke over as the very last coat. Now, I think a few of them thought I was a little crazy on that one. Another area is the glass in the windows of this house is the original glass. And you get a little waviness in this glass and you get a little seediness. When we did our kitchen cabinets with glass fronts, we searched for the glass that had a little bit of crackle and a little bit of seediness so it would look like the glass in the windows. I love now, it. That might have been overkill as well, but those are some of the details that were important. We used a pewter simple hardware and hardware is important. I can remember some hardware mistakes I've made of putting hardware in a kitchen before we renovated it. And I wanted to just give it a little facelift. And I picked a hardware that was formed like a T. Like it screwed in in the middle and then um, it had little wings. Do you know that those little ends, if you have chefs walking around with aprons and men with pockets oh. and so forth, they grab, they grab those. So we had one friend, uh, his, his name's Steve too. Steve was working with husband Steve and he comes over. The first thing he does when, and he's in, he's in uh, the business of, of uh, contracting. And so he kind of knows hardware and things like that. First thing he does is he walks into my kitchen and turns every knob so it goes up and down. So the ends don't catch <laughs> Anything that's his pocket level gets switched. So I don't do those knobs anymore. <laughs> and it'll throw you off. You're like, what? Especially if you got like hot tea or something, you get yanked. It's it's not good. Exactly. Exactly. Or it could tear a, a pocket on a I've, nice dress or whatever. I've done it. I've done it. Uh, and it's it's really uncomfortable if you're at someone else's home and it happens. Because yeah. I just got attacked by your kitchen. Right? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, our friend Steve was a very close friend, so he knew he could get by with that. And he puts <laughs> them back when he leaves. He... <laughs> so let's go into this little room you call the West Entry, which is perhaps the most important room in the house. And why is that? Well, 
The, our kitchen, before we, have, we built the West Entry, which happened in 2016, before we put that addition on the back of our house, you walked out of our kitchen door onto a little stoop, and then you went down a full flight of concrete steps outside the house. We live in Minnesota. Uh, I am not getting younger, nor is my husband. The West Entry accomplished two things. It get, got me to the right level, not to have to go downstairs on the exterior of the house, and it took me about 15 feet closer to the garage. And now does it serve as sort of like a mudroom, hangout space, place to have a cup of coffee? This is one of my favorite rooms in the house. When you walk in from the outside, you see a significant piece of art immediately, and it is a Heidi McFall self-portrait. It fills the space between two interior windows perfectly. It's just perfect size. And you feel like she's kind of looking down, uh, supervising what's going on at the back door. Love that piece of art. And the colors echo the floor of the room, which is concrete, which somewhat mimics in a more modern today way what you saw in many houses built in the 1920s of the marble black and white tile floors. The staircase is very easy to manipulate now inside the house, given a degree of elegance of its own by becoming a spiral staircase. And it brings me right up to the kitchen. You have another little piece of art uh, just on the stairway. As well. I do. I love that piece. And it came from Wally Workman Gallery in Austin. These are bicycle wheels. And they're in the black, That the shades are black and gray. And it was very carefully chosen. I love it because it in no way fights with the art by Heidi McFall. So those are the only pieces of art, only two pieces of art in the room. And they're both basically black and white and shades of gray. I love that space. Let's go into where you are now. And let's go into your gorgeous dining room. I really felt like my dining room, while I wanted it to be approachable, usable, and have a, a table that I could do almost anything on, I wanted it to be able to dress up a little bit too. It is one of my favorite rooms in the house. The wallpaper that you see in the room, it is hand-painted on raw silk. So this wisteria pattern, I custom colored just in shades of of grays. They paint it to go exactly into the, your room so that you give them the elevation of every wall in the room and they balance the pattern. This and the kitchen are probably the only rooms in, this, uh, in my house that don't have a significant piece of art because the wallpaper in this room is the art. That's very nice. So tell me more about your table and your chairs and your lighting and your beautiful chandelier in there. A little bit of the yin and the yang of the informal and the formal. We had the table custom made and the chairs as well. I wanted it oak plank top and I wanted it not stained dark so that the grain shows through. We've got a silk rug uh, that's also one of my favorites underneath the table. And my light fixture is from visual comfort, and I love the crystal and the little bit of bling that it gives. Really nice. And you also repeated the millwork in here as well, right? Exactly. Now, the millwork was in this room uh, before we started our renovation. But when the cabinetry was added, of course, the millwork had to be redone to give that cabinetry that built-in look that the cabinetry had always been here. We had to put the crown molding around the top of the cabinetry. And it is even prettier than I believe it was originally. As it turns those corners, it gets quite special. In terms of your paint color in here, is, is it the same color everywhere? We use the same color everywhere. It's, it's just easier for, for maintenance. It is Benjamin Moore White Dove. And it is throughout the first floor of the house. Oh, uh, just beautiful. So many great spaces to love. 
congratulations on all of this. It's just an amazing, beautiful home. And I would expect nothing less with Martha O'Hara. We'll be in touch. Thank and, you. Uh, you, made the, you made this easy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. We'll see okay. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.